Hi, this is John with Estimator for SketchUp. So before we get started into breaking down this model and generating takeoffs and estimates for everything, I want to talk about the user interface and some basic get started type uh, information. So this is the Estimator user interface when you first open it up. Now, you'll notice that the components, layers, and material tabs are not available. They're sort of in red here. Uh, the reason for that is that there's nothing currently selected. Estimator works off of the current SketchUp selection. So there's nothing selected. So the Quotes tab is available and the Project tab is available. Now the Quotes tab is where you would um, uh, enter in quotes for intangible things you're not going to model like framing labor or general conditions like insurance or dumpsters or something like that. You can add as many quotes as you want. Again, the idea is that everything is 100% inside of SketchUp. Um, so starting from the top here, uh, the help will just take you to our support page. We can find uh, additional documentation. Uh, this is the sync items with database. So we'll be talking a lot about that. Um, and so that your, your items database is going to be sort of your, your main spreadsheet where you keep all of your cost information and all your products uh, information. And you can sync it at any time. This is your project setting. So you can come in here and, and adjust your currency formatting for your uh, particular currency. You can put your company information in here, your website logo, upload your logo. All this information lives inside of uh, a SketchUp, not particular to this file. So this is all stored in your uh, global settings. The project tab has all the job information that is relative to this particular SketchUp file or to each unique SketchUp file. So that if different jobs can have different information re revolving around them. Also in the project tab, as we've discussed in our cost codes video and items database video, this is where you can assign the cost codes file that you want to use uh, and the items database file that you want to use. And again, as we mentioned in those videos, best practice is to uh, copy the ones that were provided uh, with for you and manipulate them, edit them, customize them to fit your operations. And then really once you've locked that in, this probably won't change. Your cost codes database probably won't change. Your items database, you'll be updating, but now if you had, say, a remodeling division, new home division, or a, a different um, branch office somewhere, you can have different items database files for different jobs. So this may change, uh, or you just may have one global form. Uh, under the generate report, these are just some general uh, settings in here. You could show only, um, we've, we've given you the different types, of, uh, cost types, like material, labor, sub, equipment, and other for you heavy duty estimators. Otherwise, you can just go generic and have it all report out. You don't have to assign these different categories. To show various columns in your reporting, this is where you can limit what you show or which columns will display. And of course, you can sort those columns in the, um, uh, when you generate the report. So this is where you can run an HTML report, which will pull up a nice branded looking report. You can then save that as a PDF. Or you can also export as a CSV file. So, um, so let's just look at some of the tabs here. We talked about quotes and project. Now, if I selected, for instance, this lamp out here, um, when I go to the components tab, now all of a sudden you're gonna see this bollard lamp and I could come down to my description since I haven't entered anything yet and I could just start typing in lamp and then you can see that bollard lamp is in my, um, in my items database and I just tab to the next field and everything auto populates in here. Now, I don't want to change pricing and so forth in here or anything to do with that if I'm going to be using that over and over again. So I always keep my uh, items database file minimized. Now, we talked in a previous video about how to set up this items database and how to run the macro so that it looks nice like you see here. If you're going to do any price changes, adding materials, removing materials, do so in your uh, items database file. I always keep mine minimized. Uh, I can come in here and change multipliers, add waste factors and that sort of thing, adjust my pricing, save it. And then when I come back over into Estimator, I can sync the items with the database. So we'll be talking more about that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this information assigned to that for right now, because we're gonna be doing that in one of the videos. So that's how components would work. Many of these things like the plant materials or in windows doors, things like that are components. 
uh, you may choose to use the layers tab for things that you want to um, accumulate like lineal footages of items like I'm going to select this exterior trim and uh, we'll be talking more in depth in the video about adding the trim but when I go to my layers tab now that I've selected that you can see the drop down appears and all of my various different trim types that I have in there five quarter by four five quarter by eight TNG soffit uh, one by ten one by four all these various um, items were modeled on their own layer so that estimator could break out those materials. Okay, so that's when you're able to choose any one of these and then match those up to your items database. So remember in theory, what you're doing here is you're taking a SketchUp object and assigning it to an item in your database file. It's that simple. Um, you don't need to use the items database file if you just wanted to start adding cost information into anything that you have in here. You don't have to use cost codes. You don't have to use your items database. It's just that's how it's going to sort out in your report. If there is no cost code, it's going to sort by items uh, code. If there is no item code, it's just going to sort alphabetically. So you don't really need to go through all that um, rigmarole, but it's the better way in the long run uh, to have that functionality. So um, let's talk about materials. So if I go to the materials tab, let's select this grass area out here. So when I selected the lawn here and I go to dark green grass is the material. So I use the materials, the materials tab is an area tool. So think about it as strictly as an area tool. Um, and anywhere that I've got this green grass applied, I can read the attribute of that area. So for example, I've selected that and if I go to uh, seed perhaps, yeah, prep and seed and select that, it's going to come in in there and there's my, um, my unit rate of 30 cents per square foot and it's prep and seed and then, so it's $1,100. So that's as simply uh, how that works. So I'm going to again delete that. We're going to go step by step. Uh, to do every one of these scenes that you see in here and um, we hope that you enjoy watching and look forward to uh, the next video. Thanks for watching.